Everybody, it's Brian Shannon from AlphaTrends.net. Figured we'd take a look at some stocks tonight. Last week, I had posted some uh, short sale candidates, and I mentioned then, I'm not bearish on this market. We're in a major uptrend. Why would anyone be bearish? But there have been some good opportunities for some stocks on the downside. Right now, the S&P 500 on the daily time frame, we're holding that 50-day moving average as well as the volume-weighted average price from the July low. When we look at the 30-minute time frame on the right, we're starting to stabilize in here and showing that, you know, the buyers have the ability to gain control here in the next day or two. The five-day moving average is still declining, but tomorrow we get rid of this data, so that five-day moving average should begin to flatten out, and maybe in a day or two we'll be in a position where we're rallying once again. So what are some opportunities to look for there? Well, AFRM, I know a lot of people are familiar with this name. I got involved in it today, and it's a good name so far. <clears throat> I've actually already taken a third of my profit off, as I often do, when the stocks move quickly and raise my stop. So let's not talk about what was, but what could be. Um, AMCR, that's not what I meant to type in. I meant to type in ACMR. Uh, MR, there we go. That's much better looking. Here's a daily time frame. We can do a volume weighted average price off of this peak over here from uh, earlier in the year. You can see we're clearly above that. We're above the year-to-date volume weighted average price. The five-day moving average is still declining a little bit, so I think it's one to keep an eye on. Maybe it does something like this over the next few days. That five-day moving average flattens out, and then it gets back above it. So not right yet. I, you know, for me at least for a purchase, especially since it just went from 96 to 102 in the last two days, I want to see it settle down, get that range to tighten up, and then perhaps it would be get, uh, able to get going higher and a stop underneath whatever the most recent relevant high or low end up, might end up being. Amazon's one that's uh, behaving well. Uh, it is uh, the volume weighted average price from this peak here. You can see we're holding above that. It is a nice pattern here with a declining five-day moving average. So, again, maybe it's a day or two early. It comes down something like this, maybe a shakeout below the five-day moving average, and then gets going. I'd keep an eye on Amazon. AVGO, I put this on Twitter on Thursday right in this area. I did take a third off, as I often do, with a gain of, I think it was just about $4 per share. And... I wasn't looking to make $4 per share on a $500 stock. I was looking to reduce risk. My stop right now is right under here, $499.50. If I get stopped out there, basically I'll lose about a dollar per share because I've taken that first third off with a gain of uh, $3.50. CGNX, uh, I put this one on Twitter as well. That one I put on Twitter, I believe, on Wednesday at 89 and a half, and it's rallied nicely since then. I have yet to take a third off here, but I'm looking to do so tomorrow, especially you know if it breaks out. That's often a really good time to take some off. Anyway, the daily chart is on the left. On the right, we have a 30-minute time frame. Each one of these candles is 30 minutes. This is the five-day moving average. We've got a 20-day moving average of 50 and a 200-day moving average. CGNX, though, behaves well. DLO, I'm a little skeptical about this one simply because it's just so darn choppy. It's got some massive ranges, 73.5 down to 66.5, backed up to 73, down to 68.5, etc. I mean, these are big ranges. You've got to have a wide stop if you're going to be involved in a name like this. But it's battling against the volume weighted average price from the all-time high. And if that range can tighten up a few uh, more days in here, it's something I'd be interested in looking in. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't get involved in Etsy today. Probably today was the day to get involved <clears throat> because it broke out of this range and you know saw a nice expansion in that range today so I wouldn't chase it but I would say if it pulls back down don't buy it on the way down instead wait for it to you know start to turn and buy it right here for instance and then you can put your stop whatever that most recent relevant high or low might end up being FFIV this one here on the daily time frame on the left you can see great looking chart up near looks like it's getting ready to battle all-time highs it got going a little bit fast in here today, so again, maybe a little pullback in the morning, and if you're really 
good. Maybe you buy it right here with a stop underneath the low of the day, or perhaps you wait for it to do something like this and buy it above some resistance. There's so many ways to trade these names. HSIC is one. Actually, I bought some call options in this one. Um, I'm not really sure why I bought the call options, truthfully. I just feel like maybe it can gap higher, so uh, I was feeling a little bit unexposed to the market, or, you know, not unexposed, but not as much exposure as I would like to. So I took a shot on some options here. This could be forming a cup and handle if you're into that sort of thing. The average daily volume is 595,000 shares per day. If we back it up, you can see this has been a prior band of resistance all the way back since 2017, 2018, 2019. So when we zoom in a little bit, we can see the buyers are regaining control. For, for it to really get some momentum, it's got to clear this level. What would be the most recent relevant high or low if that happened? Probably right here. Maybe even right here if it doesn't make a lower low uh, until then. And Sino, man, I missed this one two days in a row. I've been looking at it, looking at it. I didn't buy it on Wednesday. I didn't buy it again today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't buy all winners. Sometimes I let them go without me. Maybe you're better than me and you catch nothing but winners. Anyways, if you're in this one, I'd say a stop would go under here. Otherwise, wait for it to kind of consolidate, pull back a little bit. Great looking daily chart. If you look at the volume weighted average price from the IPO, uh, we're, you know, we just cleared that on that gap, which was an earnings event, and the volume weighted average price from the peak. So buyers are in control there. NTNX. Here's another one. It's, you know, a, an earnings gap and the volume weighted average price from that event so far is just being battled with right now. Don't chase these opening gaps, especially with a declining five day moving average. Wait for it to settle down a little bit. Maybe it's a buy above 42.60 ish in the next day or two. Stop under one, uh, this level, 41.75 ish. Here's an interesting one much different than anything I ever trade. This is a SPAC and they haven't spac yet. This is the holding company. It's going to be a company called Acorns. A good friend of mine pointed this out to me today and I'm keeping an eye on it. If it gets going above that $10 level, they're, they're, uh, they're spacking into uh, this next week. Some of these SPACs have been going crazy. Keep an eye on it. Um, it's obviously high risk because it it's based on in a coming event but I think you can really control your risk if you get out down near 980 if it doesn't work out PD this one um, I didn't get involved today I meant to I wanted to I don't know why I didn't the volume weighted average price from this event you can see is still declining I guess that's maybe the main reason I think though if it pulls back in the next day or two and does something like this then you could get involved. Here's the uh, on the left again the daily time frame. It broke that resistance on a nice increase in volume and it tested it. It's back above that level. Seems like one to definitely keep an eye on going forward as does plan. This is Anna plan. I don't know who Anna is or what she's planning but it looks like profits uh, for the long holders. The volume weighted average price from the uh, all-time high. We're back above. We've got a rising 20-day moving average right here rising 50-day moving average. The volume weighted average price from this event, which I assume is earnings, you know, that might be a good target to take a little bit off. Here's what I'm thinking is maybe it does something like this, breaks a little bit of resistance, that five-day moving average starts to flatten out, rallies up like this quick, takes them off. If it settles back down, maybe replace it as it continues back up again. Um, parkour, that's not actually how you pronounce it, I don't think, but that's my nickname for it. It is a highly speculative name. It's a biotech. I don't trust these things. If you look at the longer term, here's a volume weighted average price off that all time high. Look how we gapped above it and we're holding above it on this daily time frame. And we're seeing that range really start to tighten. So maybe this one can uh, get above here and start uh, leaping off the rooftops. The shares of cents I had put on um, uh, Twitter as well on Wednesday, I believe. I'm still watching this. I don't own it yet. It's got that, you know, it looked like maybe it was going to try to do something uh, over here, but it, you know, kind of failed. So 
it's early or it's late uh, it's just you know something to keep an eye on maybe set an alert up near four dollars per share but don't buy it if it just runs quickly to daily uh, to four dollars per share anyways it's a good longer term chart so keep an eye on that one TRGP I've mentioned this one several times on Twitter in the past the volume weighted average price from the peak you can see was right here and we had been holding that as support the last month and a half, or I'm sorry, three weeks or so. But we've been also trapped below the VWAP from this gap. Well, on Wednesday, we gapped back above that, or traded above that rather, and nice and clean here. It gapped and then traded through it. Uh, if it can get back above the high that it made on Wednesday, that might be a good opportunity with a stop somewhere under here. Anyways, uh, just rambling about some ideas I see. There's a lot of opportunity in the market. Seems like the buyers are coming back into the market once again. So uh, you want to be prepared for stocks uh, on the upside.